One of the dangers of being Fender is that people assume they know who we are as a brand, what our products are, and uh, tend to pigeonhole us, essentially saying, well, what you did in 1955 was really, really good. Just shut up and keep making that. That's a history that we have to respect as designers, but the idea that we could not innovate just because everything has already been done is like the patent office guy in 1901 who basically said, well, all the good inventions have been taken care of, so nothing else is gonna happen. And then the Wright brothers flew a plane six months later and then we were off to the races, so to speak. To dream up something like this, a blend knob that could shape shift, all of a sudden it becomes versatile by design. It becomes a dream realized on a guitar and why is it there? It's there because nobody asked for it before. It's there because nobody dared to try it before. At the birth of all this, I envisioned a knob that would do something you could never do before. And that's blend between two completely different voices. The controls on an Acoustasonic Jazzmaster are really simple. You've got volume, blend, and a five-way. The five-way is where the magic starts. Each position loads a pair of sounds. Okay, so this one, the top guy is the dreadnought one, right? There, there's a dreadnought on that okay. setting, yeah. Yeah, so with the blend knob, like, you know, say you kind of want to pick, like, best of both worlds. Like, you know, the, the one I always think, like, makes the most sense is, like, this one you've got, you know, um, you know, smaller body acoustic, and then you've got your jumbo. And so kind of, like, hitting in between is, like, you can get that huge full body sound of a jumbo, or say if you're on the parlor and you want to add like a little more bass as you're yeah. kind of like rolling in a little bit more. So is the parlor all the way down? Yep. The simplest way to explain what the blend knob does is that in any given position, you may have the voice of a dreadnought combined with the voice of a smaller instrument. As we move from one end of the blend knob to the other, we're actually combining these two sounds in the output of the instrument all of one instrument at one end, go to all of the other instrument at the other end. Think of it like an actor with a too tight suit, short hair. Let me put him on the A side of the blend knob. Now let's roll it to the B side. I change its hair and accent, two completely different characters, but from the same person. Think of the guitar being that central person, and on either end, I change characters. We change it by adding the resonance of something you already know. Like if I recorded the Dreadnought, I don't need the attack, decay, sustain, release. I need the mm, the resonance. That stuff, if I put the core of the guitar and I wrap it around with the personality of a Dreadnought, then you go, I'm listening to a Dreadnought. That stuff is added in digital, but you never get a sense that you're playing something that's got latency or it's fake because the analog is always there. Brian Swernfeger had an inspiration for the blend knob. When he approached Larry Fishman with the concept, Larry first looked at him like he was crazy. Second off said, I'm not quite sure we can do this. And what Larry's ended up coming up with is a very unique and interesting electronic way to knit these images together. These instruments do not exist in nature. So you might literally have 75% of a dreadnought and 25% of a parlor guitar. So it's as if you were capable, and you obviously aren't, of playing two instruments perfectly in sync and then being able to select how much of each of those you wanted while it was only you playing them. You can't do that because if you track it, there are going to be differences. No matter how good a player you are, you physically can't do that. So the idea of the blend knob was to let a player select how much of each of these combinations he or she wanted. The overall aim of the instrument was simplicity. Knobs and presets, the more mechanical objects there are on a guitar, the more things which can fail. Leo Fender had a very special criteria of the way that he worked. Everything was about simplicity, serviceability, functionality. Why is it not an encoder? Why is it not a display? 
We're guitar players. We don't like playing science projects. We like playing guitars. I don't want to have to think about this. I want to listen to it. I want to hear it. The switch we've used on this is a variation of the switch we've used since the early 50s, so it's a known component with known structural stability. We can work with the company that makes the potentiometers for us to very precisely control how these feel and how they operate. When I play these guitars, even though I know very intimately what the controls are and how they work, it becomes at a certain point, and a very, very quick point, feel. All guitar players, myself included, we tend to be traditionalists, and it takes us a little while to come around to anything new, unless it's really useful. <laughs> It's not something that I would normally pick up or like go to a guitar store and be like, I want to play that. But after I played it, it's... It's one of those weird things where, yeah, if you have been used to, you know, traditional, this is my acoustic, this is my electric, is like, it may not be your thing. But I, I hear that same story from people is like, until they like sit down and put it in their hand, it's just like, they're not understanding the full kind of scope of what it does. Yeah. So it's... The neck feels like an electric guitar. But strings feel like a mix between an acoustic and electric, like you could still bend up there. A little bit of give on, on the G and, yeah. and the lighter gauge is really kind of an interesting balance. Which is something you don't get on a big... Yeah, yeah, exactly. You're not seeing somebody Jumbo. up there shredding all the way up yeah, top. No. Yeah, yeah. I mainly play live rock music and then you go yeah. into do like a radio session and the parts come in where the solos <laughs> come in and you're on like... An acoustic guitar. Uh, how, how, how far can I how slide far up can on that I bed? Slide yeah, yeah. Up and then it, the body's up to here, so you have yep. to be like. Kind of one of those ideal scenarios yeah. for that because you don't have to totally rewrite the solo. I mean, completely. It's really about creating a new tool, a new versatile tool that people can use to find new sounds, find new inspiration. You know, there's a tremendous amount of technology in your phone. You don't know how it works, but you're awfully glad it does. It's precisely the same kind of stuff here. There's a whole lot happening behind the scenes. You work with the effect of it. You don't particularly understand the cause, and it's perfectly okay.